If you're building a questionnaire survey or any kind of form generating app on Bubble, there are three different development complications you must watch out for. In this video, we're walking through JotForm, which is a form builder, and it's a type of app that's commonly built on Bubble. It's also one we see a lot of people running into a particular set of development issues with. So this can cause performance and scale complications down the road and really just a lot of frustration during development. So if this is the type of app or functionality that you're building, keep watching so you can avoid these complications in your own development. It's Gabby at Coaching No Code Apps, where we help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps to start or grow their businesses all without coding. JotForm is one of many form building tools out there that overlap in common functionality, such as creating custom questions to anticipate custom responses, using conditional logic to present questions in a certain order, drag and drop interfaces to quickly build out the form flow, uploading files, capturing signatures, and much, much more. When it comes to the data component, you wanna make sure you have clean dynamic data structures. After all, your users are coming to your app in order to customize the entire experience. They should be able to format how their questions are presented, anticipate unique responses, and overall have control over the flow. First thing you want to avoid are too many static structures. This means hard coding more fields than you really need, where you're having to anticipate or guess the format of your users' questions and answers. So the more dynamic those structures are, the better. The next thing you want to avoid is not leveraging option sets. So in other words, take advantage of those option sets. Option sets are fantastic for form builders because they can allow you to offer a list of capabilities or a list of choices for your users to select from and customize their forms from there. So for example, option sets for form builders can include the list of possible value types, such as text, numbers, dates, ranges, or the list of possible answer structures, such as single choice, multi-select, text only. There's many different ways you can leverage option sets to not only make it easier for your users to custom build their forms, but also to create a more performant app. Option sets aren't a part of the database, and so they inherently have a lot of efficiencies already built into them. So definitely use those as much as possible. And of course, it's really easy to over-design your database from the start. Start simple. Start with the baseline so that you can understand what functionality needs to be built around really simple form question answer structures and customize from there, layer on top, piece by piece from there. Okay, so the consequences of running into these pitfalls with uh, an inefficient data design is that you'll end up creating features that don't scale. You'll end up wasting your own time and creating a lot of back and forth work for yourself, which can lead to an inefficient, underperforming application. This is something that we spend a lot of time on with our own clients because of how serious database issues can really become and create a ripple effect in the rest of the application. The next component you wanna focus on for your form building application are the workflows that you're designing to create those customized experiences. Now, there are a couple of pitfalls that we see come up time and time again. The first one is right out of the gate, building out multiple ways of getting the user started. This is a common type of functionality. You open up a tool and depending on your comfort level, you may want to build something from scratch. You may want to start from a template. You may want to import information. While that can be convenient for the user, it's not the way to go for getting started with this application. The best thing you can do is to start with one method of having the user getting started so that you set up a baseline. You're gonna learn a lot about what you need in terms of functionality for that. As you start to gather feedback from your users, you can introduce different ways of getting started after that because you won't really know what's going to be the most helpful for your users until you learn from them. So don't get stuck in overbuilding uh, you know, onboarding sequences where you have multiple ways of essentially doing the same thing, right? Getting started with a new form. And instead, Allow yourself to stay laser focused on one sequence only so that you can get to a completed start to finish experience and be able to test that first. The next pitfall that we see come up is creating excessive conditional branching where there's many variables built into the logic to dictate what question the user needs to go to next or the person who's answering uh, the form or filling out the survey. Again, keep things simple here. You need to learn about where your baselines are, what's going to work, what isn't going to work before you end up creating extra work for yourself and you know, potentially building out really inefficient systems or overcomplicated systems that could end up making things hard for you to manage or making things more confusing for the user. 
keep things simple. You could start by uh, allowing the form builder to indicate uh, what the question is that they need to move to uh, if they select a certain answer and leave it at that. The consequences of doing too much too soon uh, is going to lead to extra work on your part, right? You don't want to build without learning from feedback first. You're going to end up working on way too many features at once, likely to end up scrapping a lot of them and end up having to rework them or replace them with something else. You don't want to end up in this analysis paralysis situation. The next component you want to focus on is the design of your form building application. Part of what makes these tools so attractive to users is that it makes it really easy to build a form very quickly. So when you're building out the front end interface of your designs, everything should be built with intent, okay? You wanna enhance the user's experience so that they can accomplish their goals faster, more conveniently in a way that doesn't make them think too much. Now, of course, it's really easy to encounter some pitfalls here because with designs, there's often, you know, shiny object syndrome happening here. You know, you can get fancy just for the sake of getting fancy, but that can often work against you. So the first pitfall that we see is getting way too fancy with the drag and drop interface. If you're offering a drag and drop capability, there should be a reason behind every interaction. You want to allow drag and drop to help them sort through the questions, for example, reorder them or allow drag and drop to quickly build the various components in the form order. So for example, a title at the top, the question right underneath it, a button right underneath that. You don't want to uh, overwork the animations and the color changes and you know, the various states because it can end up creating confusion for the user if they're not clear on what's going to happen if they're moving things around in a drag and drop style. The next pitfall that we see as well is creating way too many share options for the forms. Of course, when it comes to building out forms, we expect that they're gonna be sent out to people to answer the forms or the questions or the surveys. This can be done a lot of different ways, via email, via a, a link that gets sent to them or that is uniquely generated with a code or even with a text message or uh, sharing on social media, lots of different ways to do that. I want you to focus on what's gonna make the most sense for your user's audience. And if multiple options do apply, start with a few. Don't try to do everything in there. This just goes back to the uh, items that I was mentioning before, where it's really easy to overbuild from the beginning, but you really want to start with just a couple so that you can set up a baseline, test it, and get feedback from your users to understand how effective it really is. Otherwise, you're going to end up splitting up your energy uh, for no reason, you know, delaying your launch, you're creating an inefficient development environment. Again, you could likely end up creating more work than you really need to. Kind of along with all of the fancy uh, interface designs are animations. Uh, this we see a lot with form builders because um, it can get so interactive and you know it seems fun to want to make things a little bit more lively and engaging, but everything should have a purpose. Don't just create animations for the sake of creating them, you know, right? Just because you can doesn't mean that you should. If an animation is going to help call the user's attention to something because they've missed a required uh, setting or you need to make it really clear that they have completed uh, a section, then that's great, right? Everything should inform them about where they're at. This is something that we see come up a lot with our own clients. They tend to get excited about all of the fancy tools and bells and whistles that they can add to their app. And because it is relatively easy to put them in there, they'll do it, right? And those things will add up over time, which is not always a good thing. Those things can really overcomplicate your design. It's more for you to manage. You could end up confusing your users. So you really want to be careful with this sort of thing. All right, from here, you should have a good idea of how to better navigate your development for a form building type of application. If you wanna go vastly deeper though, schedule a strategy call to sit down and chat with us. We'll help you put together a custom roadmap for your app's development. Then we'll see whether you and your app might be a fit to join our private client program, where we help entrepreneurs go from idea to pilot launch. To talk more, head to coachingnocodeapps.com slash call. All right, I hope this was helpful and we'll see you in the next one.